I'm from a little town called Bremen, it's like 45 minutes west of here, and uh, this past year I shot up for American Idol, and that all started with this uh, competition held by WSB TV, Channel 2 Action News, called Atlanta Idol, and I mean, that, that's another way to go about doing these big shows, is find some way to get, you know, kind of get an idea of what the audition process is going to be like, and... They had celebrity judges there. It was like Fred Blankenship and uh, two other past Idol contestants, and um, that that was just easy to get in your head because I I started singing when I was thirteen, so that was like three years ago, and so I had no idea what like an audition was gonna be like because the only thing I auditioned for was like my school's one act play, <laughs> so I mean that that was literally it. And um, yeah, so we sent in a video. It was a video submission audition, and I sang. I didn't even, the only time I sang that song, but I was vibing that day, and I sang uh, Can't Help Falling In Love With You mm. by Elvis, and I sent that in. And um, I got, they chose the top 30 to come to WSB TV Studios. And keep in mind, this is not American Idol, this is still kind of like a local. little branch, little local kind of thing. But the winner of that got a frontline ticket, which, you know, there's the 16,000 people in line, like Piedmont Park, for the open call. And uh, you could skip all that with the frontline ticket. So when I got to there, I performed this song called In My Life by the Beatles. And I chose that song because, honestly, I just grew up with it. My dad is the biggest Beatles fan on the planet. And so it was just, that, that's one thing. Go with a familiar song, you know. Go with your gut. Um, and I left that day a finalist, and I got a front-of-the-line ticket. And so I was like, yeah, I was pumped, dude. And um, I went to Atlanta to the open calls because... Like other auditions, actors probably know, it's callbacks on callbacks on callbacks until you get the part. And uh, I remember my mom and I were so hyped that morning because we skipped this huge line outside the park. Uh, and uh, we got to the front, and I was in the first group of the day. Keep in mind, I had no idea. Oh, what time did the day start? And uh, for that day, for that audition, it started at, whoa, we just got over there at like 8 o'clock. Eight eight right. But the people that were in line, yeah. started like Since around 5 o'clock. Yeah, it was yeah. nothing yeah. crazy for us because we had that front of the line ticket. Like I said, you know, try and get your perks. Be on top of your game. But so I was in the first line of the day, and I thought, like, I had no idea that there were even callbacks at that point. I was like, let's go and audition for the judges kind of thing. So then um, if you're ever thinking about auditioning for this show or The Voice or any of these shows, there's these vocal scouts and producers of the show and they set up like 10 tents on either side of the park and you go up in groups of four and you get like 20 seconds to sing and I had no idea so like my guitar was still in the case like I thought I was gonna get some time I had like all my information in the envelope and my guitar case on my back but we get up there and they were like sing everybody was registered yeah like I didn't even think yeah yeah, and like just, you know, give them your stuff, like honestly, and um, so I was like, give me a second, give me a second, and I could already tell like this was not going to go good, I was like, oh goodness, but uh, yeah, I played 20 seconds of a song, and all it was three other girls, and first she called up those three girls, and she just left me like standing there, like I didn't know what was going on, but she said, thank you girls so much for coming out, and uh, come back next year. So then I was left there by myself, and she called me up, and she's like, Andrew, you have a really good voice. I love your style, I love your look, I love your personality, but your guitar was out of tune. Come back next year. So then. But she also said, and you said when you left that day, the next time, she said, the next time you walk up to this table, and this goes back to what you were saying, yeah. earlier, I want to see it from your head to your toes that you're ready. Ooh. That's important. And that was confidence. something that you told me many times throughout that day. She said, when you walk up to the table, I want you to feel like you're ready. And y'all just heard his guitar was here. We thought it was registration. We didn't know. <laughs> we didn't know the process. And that's the, that's the worst feeling, going into a blind audition, having, like, you, you don't know what's going to happen. And so, yeah, man, that, that, was, that was really, I was really hard on myself after that because I was like, oh, what are we going to do? So um, I went to the car that day. And I was like, Mom, I want to do this again. And I have the most supportive mom in the entire world. And so she was like, let's register again, and let's go to Asheville, North Carolina for another callback. And that's what you have to do. You have to mentally be prepared, you know, 
that it's not always going to work out as an actress or an actor or in these singing competitions because I, I, I wasn't, like, I don't know. I'd never been to one. I didn't know what to expect. And so, um, yeah, that, that kind of ran through my head at that point. And so we got in the car, and we made it like a two-day trip vacation up to Asheville, North Carolina. And um, this time, though, we didn't have a front line ticket. So we did the camp out thing where we, we were on top of this mountain in North Carolina at like four o'clock in the morning with blankets and we were, well, we were like 200, 300th in line. First 500. So I got a little idea to kind of watch and see what was going on too. And that's important too. I mean, I wouldn't always recommend being the first in line, you know, at like auditions. It's good to get an idea, especially when you're not familiar with what's going on. To get an idea of uh, how the process works, how long you get, it's just all important factors, honestly. And so this time, I kind of got to mentally prepare myself, and you know, kind of take time to build the confidence up to get ready to audition. And like I said, it was the same setup. They were like ten tents all in this parking garage. Yeah, it was like in a parking garage, wasn't it? It was a isolated lot in downtown Nashville. It wasn't a parking oh, garage. I got you. It was just a but then, um, yeah, uh, I got to see tons of people go up and audition, and so it was my turn to go up. I sang the same exact song, and the same thing happened, where I was in a group with three other girls, and they all got called up first. So I was like, this is deja vu, man. Like, <laughs> like I was not, I was like, what's going to happen? And so um, they told those three girls that, thank you for coming out, and come back next year. And then this guy called me up. I was like, oh, please don't send my guitar with that tune. That was my one thought. I tuned my guitar so many times that day just to make sure that would happen. And he said, Andrew, I really like you. I'm going to send you through today. So that was the first round, the open call. And immediately after that, you go straight to a video camera round where they pull you over and it's still in the, like, the lot, but it's like kind of isolated from everything else. And they want to see how you act on camera. And that plays a big part in these, you know, The Voice, America's Got Talent. They, you got to see how you react on camera to make sure, just, you know, you, you got to you gotta own the part. And um, so I played In My Life by The Beatles again, and we left that day not knowing. And they sent that to producers in Los Angeles, right? And so we had like a two-week period where we had no idea. And I actually had a friend, his name was Sean, and we both made it to that point that day, that's where I met him. And he didn't make it past the, the camera round, which I thought was interesting, because I was like, wow. Because he, he can sing, like, he's so, so he good. he kill it, vocally. He, he was so good, but. But the majority part, the majority of that particular interview on the camera, he did a small song, but the rest of it were questions, just talking. You know, mm. telling him who he is, where he's from, his story, what are his hobbies, that it was an interview. Like you talked about yeah. that interview process. A little bit of the song, a lot of interview. Mm -hmm. Even for the music show. So then after that, uh, we got a uh, confirmation email that said you did make it to the next round. So they sent us to, we had to drive. I mean, they didn't send us, but we went to New Orleans, Louisiana for a callback round. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was a callback round. And so. Which was really, what was really interesting is they then took us in like, group. we were in the same waiting room with everybody else because it was an open call and a callback round on the same day. But the callback people were separated. And so we, they took us in like groups of like 20 for the callback and we went upstairs in this place and there were three different rooms you had to make it through. So it was pretty much, it felt like a video game for me, honestly, because I was like, oh my goodness, like, uh, so I was second to go in the callback rounds, but they sat us outside on like a, like a sofa like this, and we were all like crowded together, and one by one we would walk into these rooms, and in every room there were different producers for the show. And so in the first room I walked in, and everybody made it through the first room who I knew of in my group of the 20, and so I performed that song, and what I found was really interesting was that after I finished, they looked at me and they said, Andrew, you're a theater kid, aren't you? 
I said, yeah. And they were like, you really need to calm it down on the whole theater aspect because that's another thing. You need to, you need to prepare as if, you know, you, everything is, because I was recently in a high school production and I was Corny Collins in Hairspray and that's totally different than singing, you know, like an emotional Beatles song. You don't need to be in that same thing where you're trying to like make eye contact. You really need to like hunker down and get in your zone. And that's something I found really important. And um, they called you on it, didn't they? They called me on it because, like, uh, they they said you really just need to get to the music more than the showman aspect. Mm -hmm. You know, you because you know music's all about getting an emotion out, and it's kind of hard when you're just trying to like theater it up. And I had no idea I was doing that, but that was just a good mental note in the process. So the next room was, yeah, I did I did the same thing, and it was two other scouts. And they, they sent me through to the third room. And in the third room, it was the executive producers of the show. So um, they were like top dogs, I believe. And when I got there, it was, it was not necessarily about the singing, but about your story. They wanted to hear how you communicated, how you got your own story across. Because with these shows, I mean, it's important to have the story aspect just as much as the singing. Because, I mean... Yeah, so I told them about, I'm from a small town, and I'm 16, and uh, I told them I was a singer-songwriter, I played in one of my songs, and I, I talked to them for about 10 minutes, and then they sent me through to the next round, which was amazing, and this was the round you see on TV, so this was Katy Perry, Lionel Richie, and Luke Bryan, and that was in Savannah, and so my whole family drove down to Savannah, and as soon as we got there, it wasn't even like 15 minutes, was it, we immediately started filming. And, um, yeah, we filmed from, what, like... Started at 7, but he actually didn't. He was the third person to meet the judges that day, and he met him at 3.30 that afternoon. And there was, like, no break before that. It was just film, 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 film. And you have to go through these different rooms. There's one room called the confessional room, and that's where, like... Have you ever watched Big Brother? That show where like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know when they go in the confessional room? Yeah. Yeah. They have one of those for Idol too, and that's where it's like all white around. And you just talk to a camera. And that, that was something I found particularly hard for me. Because they would just give you a little bit of like, hey, just, just talk about this subject. And you know, you, there's no lines. You just have to make it up on the spot. And that's something I trouble with throughout the process. And that was really hard for me. And... Yeah, and you have to word it a certain way, too, I learned. You can't be, like, so, I don't know, generic with it. You have to, you have to really get it in the pocket of what they're looking for. So then, at, what, 3 o'clock that day, we auditioned for the judges, and uh, that was crazy. It felt like I was putting on, like, a VR headset. Because, like, they, every, the lights were so good, and the makeup, like, everybody looked like they're wax figures. It was crazy. <laughs> and, like, I was just this... 16 year old kid who's like sweating buckets <laughs> and uh yeah so um after that i played in my life and they were like andrew we need you to rough it up a little bit and that's something too for an audition process you have to be prepared you have to have a backup plan so i just started playing thinking out loud by ed sheeran and um yeah i, I think it worked <laughs> and so uh they sent me through with three yeses and i got to go to hollywood oh, so Hollywood took place in January and of this year, and it was like all the contestants that you saw, like I met Maddie and like all the other contestants on the show. It was really, really cool because like in this huge room, like we were all eating dinner together. Like I knew like the winner of American Idol was there. Like it was crazy. And so what happened with my Hollywood experience was a little bit different than, you know, any well, everybody so there's these lines of tens, right? And there's ten people in a row. And I was in the last group, right? You were in the sixth group. Oh. Sixth group of ten. And on the first day, and then um, number six group got mixed up because of uh, scheduling and dinner. And so we all had to wait. And so we were going to come tonight after the end of the group. Um, they kept getting kick, 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 kick. Group six just kept getting us. Okay, you got to come back tomorrow. So we started off the next day after idle school because he's a student and he had to go to school so many hours a day or sit in school. After that, we uh, came to the set and they're like, no, group six, you're next. So every time, as you can imagine, as a performer, 
you're getting ready. You're getting yeah. that adrenaline ready to go, right? There was about six or seven times that group six got ready to go and then they kicked them mm. or bumped them to another thing. It was just the roll of the dice that day. But he ended up still going from the sixth one to being the very last group of the entire process. And that was at like 9.45 at night, California time. And so, it's plus adjusting, like time adjusting mm -hmm. from, you know, Eastern Standard to... It's a three hour difference. Yeah, it, it played with you, man. And so, I did not make it through in the Hollywood round, but and what an experience, man. Stage. The other thing for auditions, too, is he walked out on the stage and they had the parents sitting in this row where they were recording. Mm -hmm. So, I was sitting there and I was there alone. I was the only one in my family that went out to, to L.A., but I had great friends who had adopted me from the other contestants' <laughs> families, and they happened to be sitting beside me. And um, and Andrew walked out. And um, do y'all remember um, Ada? Ada Fox. Ada Fox, the, the drag queen this year. Mm -hmm. So Ada was right before Andrew. So if you got to follow up somebody, holy <laughs> moly. Yeah. And he walked out, and I remember saying, and I remember that that's not his guitar. And we had he had bought a new mm -hmm. guitar. And I'm like, I really don't think that's his guitar. I may have said some other words. I did not use those on TV. I'm like, mm -hmm. that is, and, and I had heard there was such a a, a a drop in him coming out, like he wasn't just coming right out. And then they said, we're having, the guitar won't work. And then he walks out with his guitar. I'm like, that's not his blood, blood, blood guitar <laughs> <laughs> that we loved all the way from Atlanta. And, and it ended up that his guitar would not work, so they mm. just handed him one that wasn't in tune, uh, and he was tuning as he was walking out on the oh, stage. So you gotta be prepared for, his for anything, um, honestly. For these magnificent judges, and so. But Legendary did. judges, too. I mean, I was like, mm. But you did it, didn't you? I did it, and, <laughs> I, you know, I at the end of the day, I'm happy with my performance under the things I went through that day, so.